outside of these eight uh, bases, maybe to see a better series, but that would only be through TI alloys. And that meant everything north of Helio Solar, Akali Mining, none of these bases were being touched at all. So that is a, one of the reasons that TI Alloys itself was cut off. Once TI Alloys was cut off, you started seeing a lot more fights pushing north of Indar X and some fights pushing south of Havar Databank. When you start on a continent, most of the time, Quartz is going to be open. Now, taking Quartz most often always requires that you have more population than the enemy does at first, because you're going to want to sack all the points before the enemy can get on them. Good thing is the enemy only has one spawn on Platoon Waypoint, and not an easiest way to get all the way over to the other spawns. So you have one way, you've got multiple ways to get to the center point, you have a really long way to get to the powerhouse building, and another very long way to get over to <clears throat> the A point. So, if you are defending Quartz Ridge, there's going to be Sunderers, let me see how I want to do this. There's going to be Sunderers at... Platoon Waypoint. There's always going to be one there, almost all the time. You're going to have a Sunderer south at Alpha Waypoint. Or to the other building, south the other building next to it. You're going to have a Sunderer around Charlie Waypoint, or you're going to have a Cinder around Platoon Waypoint. So, I'm going to move Rob over here. The way that you get a Cinder over on Charlie Waypoint is obviously dropping an anvil. This is sometimes the best way to circumnavigate the horrible spawn from Bravo Waypoint, because you are all going through one tunnel right around platoon. There's a tunnel that takes you right underneath. It's B. That tunnel is practically a kill box. The best way to get onto Quartz Ridge is not through Sun. It is ideally dropping people on the points you already want. Yeah, it's tunnel underneath B point, and then pulling up Sunderers afterwards. So right now, if you're in the Hex, you can see we have an Allied Sunderer on Bravo. The tunnel is on the Platoon Waypoint. Most oftentimes, you're going to see a Ratter on Bravo, on the second story of the building, or Charlie, somewhere around the back, over here inside. Those are the best places for a Ratter. It's also... You can also put a router on top of those little oil derricks inside C point. You just need a light assault to do it. Um, having a router inside the B point will bypass the kill tunnel underneath. So if you can place one there, that would be excellent. If you look around Alpha Waypoint, you can see just north of that someone's also anvil to sunder inside and deployed it. That's an interesting way to bypass having to get shot from the C point. From moving from spawn on the two waypoint all the way to the B point, it's possible to grab a Sunderer and put it there. And that allows you to spawn directly south of B and go straight inside. Now, if you have people to spare and you don't have that many um, enemies completely ensconced on Quartz Ridge. One of the better ways to take out Sunderers is either dropping on them by air, because attempting to take all of these Sunderers is hampered by the fact that the wall keeping armor out also keeps infantry from moving on the armor, because once you get off out of the walls, um, 
the basically box that Quartz Ridge is in, you are now subject to all of the armor shooting at you as you come over the walls. So some of the best ways I found out is to drop one, like drop two to four people right on top of the Bravo Waypoint Sunderer. Have them go light assaults or engineers, drop them from the Valkyrie or drop them from on high, and just have them sack that Sunderer right there. It's easier than trying to push people. Like it's, I would call it a higher priority to nuke Sunderers on Quartz Ridge than it is trying to get them off the point if you have the time to do it. If you don't have the time to do it, then obviously you're going to want to try to retake C, retake B, or retake A. Where the enemy is will depend on what point you're going to try and go after first. Personally, I would recommend going after either the A point or the B point first, because despite having multiple entryways into C, the bulk of everyone is going to be on C point, so you're not going to want to try and have to take that. Follow the path of least resistance. So, okay, hold on. I need invites in it. Okay, there we go. Zano, I'm moving you to Delta Squad. Please lock it once you get in there. There we go. Oh yeah, you don't need to be a light assault to get a rider up on those silos on C point. You just need to jump on a little box onto the railing, then onto a silo. Wait, there's actually only the three of you? I thought there was more people. I was just quiet all this time. Uh, there's more... Everyone in this Discord call is everyone who's here right now. Ideally, there'd be more people, but apparently it's bad timing. Snack is in. <clears throat> Snack is not able to come in here. I know he was trying to. It's a couple other things. So, but now I have access to the Delta Waypoint router. Delta Squad Waypoints, that's nice. So I'm conducting this whole thing basically from the map screen. So if you just want to stare at the map, that would be great. The best... Armor strategies that I've seen used are basically pulling armor from south of our databank and going up the right path. So if you see on your screen, I've drawn arrows on where you should go. If you can pulse, ask people to pull several lightnings from our databank, that's also a nice way to flank whatever Sunderer is on Bravo Point, and to flank whatever Sunderer is north of Alpha on Platoon Way. Dropping people on this base is always the best, I, I would see it as always the best way to get on there and just allow the blueberries to pull Sunderers up because everyone knows where their Sunderers are supposed to be here. And unless they park it somewhere really dumb like Charlie Squad Waypoint, most of the time, the blueberries are going to put the sunders where they need to be. You really don't want any more than, say, three sunderers and maybe another router. Like, put a router on B point and or a router on A point, sunder in the garage. That's pretty much it. You can you see all of the blue bit, all of the NC swarming their way onto the Bravo point sunder. That's rare especially if you're defending the base because more often than not you're just, they're going to get hung up on the bravo waypoint attacking this base there's no really good way to cut it off in order to cut this base off you have to go through the lot alum lattice and take the tech plant and that's a real deep punch into territory in the south so cutting it off is not an option you have to go through it if you want to go to Havar. Where the Sunderers are at right now, so let me clear it. Clear all this clutter off the screen. Once again, Platoon Waypoint, Anvil Sunderer in, Alpha Waypoint, put a Sunderer south of Bravo and Charlie. 
put a router on delta or a router on alpha. Actually, if you have a yeah, if you have your sundry on sunder on A, put your router on B. Put a squad each in building and have one squad rotating between B and C. Most of the time it's going to be on C, but you're going to want to rotate the squad wherever the enemy is starting to stream out of. You want people on the roofs watching for air, specifically backdrops and galaxies, because like I said, air is the way to take this space, not armor. So you're going to want to have some AA up. Did anyone have any questions on quartz? Nope. Okay. Yeah, so quartz and its surrounding bases, quartz, Indarcom, Indarx. Let's go to Indarcom next. So this one, there are only really two Sundro locations or two that you really want there. Alpha Waypoint, Bravo Waypoint. It's possible to move a Sunderer up here to Charlie Waypoint. If you don't have a Sunderer on Alpha, put that Sunderer on Charlie. The air, like I said, is a good way to take the best ways to stop people or stop an equal population from getting you is by drawing Sunderers up from the platoon waypoint with cobalts on top of them and moving the Sunderers all the way deep into the base on top of this and making it so that these Sunderers are all aiming their cobalts down on the spot. Most likely that's going to force the enemy to airdrop you if they're smart or OSU if, that'll, if they happen to have one around. But that's one nice way to use vehicles to clear, to provide um, anti-infantry support. You hold this base from the triple stack, and you actually stop this base from being recapped from the double building, from the two stack in front. If you happen to have a whole platoon dropping on Indarcom, put one on the point, one in the building, one inside the building in front okay i've been killed from the map screen i don't know why put one on charlie and then just have this other one watching for aa other than that in darkcom is good because it opens up the dahaka lattices uh, also another point see where this bastion is right now dahaka southern it's possible to shell in darkcom with this bastion over at Southern, and you're not impeding its ons into Indarcom. In terms of if the enemy holds courts and you're attempting to attack it, this is a nice divert. If you have out a broadcast hub, move north into Indarcom array. That way you draw some population off of courts because you have to take courts and you have to take Indarcom. This is the stalemate factor of the last between the southwest and the north. TI alloys used to be an option. You could do alloys, series, seabed, but you have to go through common. You have to go through courts, especially if you're trying to make any inroads into the north or any inroads into the south. Once you have Indarcom open, if you're attacking from the north, you open up the whole out of lattices. It allow you to punch all the way or threaten the bio lab. Now, normally you don't want to send people into bio labs, but because the, this one, Aldam, is actually deep enough into the VS territory, and say that you have taken Howling Pass or your population isn't held up at the tech plant, you can actually push into this bio lab and try and start an alert or push all the way through courts. So that's pretty much calm. Any questions on that? Uh, just another thing. If you have access to armory assets, such as the Citadel Shield, if you're finding a hard time taking in our comm, if you place a Citadel directly on Bravo Waypoint, that pretty much covers if, if you're attacking the point. Yep. 
That will cover just enough of the area of the triple stack for you to shoot out. It will cover from that staircase so you can't shoot in. Yep. So that's Quartz, Indar. Let's continue moving east over to the island. So say that you were fighting it in our cop. You lost it. Now you are moving to Aladdin Broadcast. Aladdin Broadcast doesn't quite suffer from the same issue as Com, but it can. It's possible to loop vehicles through the southern part of the base and bring cobalts to bear inside this so if the enemy is well entrenched on the point building on Alpha Squad way, they may also try and pull enemy armor into this to try and help shell or stop defenders from getting this base. For this one, you have the normal center location of platoon waypoint, putting a router right behind the Alpha waypoint on Bravo or in the triple stack also helps. You hold this base practically by spawn camping it. So Alpha Waypoint, Bravo Waypoint, Charlie. This is where you want your squads. Actually, you don't really need that squad back on Delta. You can bring Delta up and have them skirmish between your other points. You want to bring your squads forward into Aladdin and spawn camp him as hard as you can until they push past these stairs right on the dotted lines. Once the enemy pushes down past those stairs, you want Delta Squad to be either with Bravo or you want them on the point. So you're killing as many people traversing open ground as possible. If you can pull armor through the arrows, or just drop armor by, by anvils, and have them bring bulldogs and cobalts and air to shell out them, because it's not a very well just doesn't have much air cover here, that's really nice. Now say that the enemy has done this, and you are trying to take back Aladdin. One of the best ways i found use here is to grab smoke grenades or smokes and obscure the enemy line of sight between Charlie and Alpha Point. That way your platoon or your squad is trying to rush not over open ground, so don't rush straight from the point. Let's delete some of this. Don't go out of the point, and don't try and make it over this open ground. That is going to be a slaughter, especially if you've got enemies inside the shield station. If you've got 30 seconds left on Aldum, and the enemy is on Bravo, Alpha, and Charlotte, you are going to need your whole platoon, and preferably a max crash, to get all the way onto the point. But say that the enemy has not taken the Bravo building, you want to move your platoon or move your squads north into the building and then go over this open ground. If you can get some of another platoon to move south, do not take this open area. You're going to get slaughtered. Use the buildings. Obscure your line of sight because this is a very exposed spawn. You have a lot of people shooting at you from above. If they're above, and if they're smart, they'll put them above. If you need to clear armor or spawn, like a best guess, air dropping them over, or pulling armor from the biolab, slash out of research hub, and just flanking all the armor that's coming in. Most of the armor that's coming in from the north on Indarcom isn't really going to expect four to five tanks barreling from Aldum Research Lab over this wall. So okay. 
this arrow right over here, you can pull armor across this little ridge, and you can straight flank all of the tanks that have surrounded out and broadcast out because there's nothing better to do. There's several pathways you can see on the map that you can go about it. This is a good way to flank anything. It's also it'll also hit any exposed sunders that are around the ammo tower on Alpha Way. They can put Sundra here, cloak it. That's pretty much out of them. Now, once they get into the bio lab, you pretty much don't want to ever go to that bio lab. You want to go to out of research, out of broadcast, and just cut this bio lab off. It's not worth it trying to slug through. It's almost never worth it trying to slug through a bio lab. Luckily, on this continent, most of the bio labs can be cut off. I think, actually, no. I don't know why I'm saying that. Every bio lab can be cut off. If you can cut it, cut it. Is there any questions on Alda? Okay. Um, if we had TI Alice open, we would talk about how this would be a population sink, and that really the best benefit of having TI Alice open was because you could also hit series. Because unlike the crown, which is a uh, flying fortress, and unlike TI Alloys, which is arm always an armor cluster ball, Ceres is often flipped back and forth during nice times. So that would have been the benefit of TI Alloys. That entire lattice is cut off now, so that's no longer a big issue. But since we're at it, yeah, we can hit series when we go to the north. Let's move on to the next one, Crossroads. Now, if there are no enemies on Crossroads, it is possible to ghost cap this base. You just need good cohesion from your squad leaders, and you need them all to drop at the same time. The way to take Crossroads, if nobody is on it, drop people on Alpha, drop a squad on Bravo, drop a squad on Charlie, and then also drop one on Delta. Order your platoon not to touch the point until everyone is where they should be. That way you start flipping the points at exactly the same time. Once all three points are flipped, the SCU on Delta, I believe this is the base where it will drop if you have all the points. You want one squad on Delta, dropping that SCU as fast as you can. Once that happens, you want to pull some people off of Alpha and Charlie. You want to drop them inside that Delta. Taking the SCU down from inside Crossroads is one of the best ways to prevent people trying to retake that bait. It forces them to come in by air. It forces them to come in by armor, but they can no longer spawn it. I've ghost capped crossroads like this a few times. It's going to be really lucky if this happens, or really tricky to pull off. But it will save you a headache if you've lost crossroads. Now, if you happen to not have crossroads, you're attacking it from Snake Ravine or Xenotech. This will most likely be after... Your side has retaken Xenotech, and there is a massive armor glut on platoon waypoints. Best way here is to pretty much make a decision. Are you going to deal with the armor between Xenotech and Crossroads? If you've dealt with that armor, you can send some infiltrators back behind on Crossroads, disable their armor spawns from Crossroads and Tarage Depot. If you can disable the armor between Xenotech and Crossroads, it allows you to pull hard spawns into Crossroads itself. Otherwise, you're going to want put, to put Sunderers right here on Alpha. Unless that Sunderer is a Cloaked Sunday, you don't want Cloaked Sundays on Alpha because people are always going to go there. You want a Sunderer south on Charlie. You can put a Sunderer right here on Delta, but 
more often than not, people coming from that Sunderer are going to get shot to pieces. You can even put a Sunderer north of Alpha onto Bravo, but ideally the best places for Sunderers are going to be Alpha and Charlie. You can actually put Charlie somewhere back here. If you have a router, absolutely put a router on Platoon Waypoint on the second floor of that building. That router is what's going to keep the Platoon Waypoint alive, and it's also going to help keep people having pressure on this A point. Most likely, if you have equal pop at cross routes, well, honestly, it's all going to depend on what your enemy will focus on. If you have an extra squad, have them run around Bravo, Charlie Alpha, have them run around whichever point has the most issues. If they are all inside their spawn, though, you can push your extra squad inside crossroads, roll Sunderers up, and if you start to do this in mass, you can actually get some of the puppies to do it. Roll Sunderers up inside crossroad and just camp Cobalt armor right in the basement. This will force everyone to clear everything inside under the basement before they hit the points. If you have good snipers or good people basically who know how to call out, you're going to want to watch these air pads on Alpha. You're going to watch the air pad on Bravo and Charlie because a good platoon leader will realize you're not going to want to try and clear out crossroads unless you have a squad itself on top of the base. They're going to drop off of these air pads, go straight over the whatever people are inside and hit them from the rear. Light assaults going from the Bravo. If they have skirmishers and drifters and ambushers, they can actually get onto Charlie. I mean, they can get onto this triple stack. Most likely, I would just drop galaxies. I'm always a fan of airdrops. If you've always if you can, if you haven't already known that by now, airdrop people directly onto this triple stack right on the two-way point, take it out. If you have to drop two squads on this, go right for it. Have some people drop on Charlie. You do have to get them there first. Galaxies are great. Valkyries are better. Well, Valkyries are faster. Galaxies are better. Um... If you're defending this space, most of the defensive rules apply. Hit the spawns as fast as you can. The reason I say drop two squads on platoon waypoint is there will most also likely be a router here. So if I tell you to put a router here to attack the base, the enemy is going to put a router there to attack it. So you're going to want to take that one out as well. If there's a Sunderer on Delta waypoint, ignore that. That is... Not really going to be doing anything for them. If there's a Sunderer on Alpha Waypoint, ignore that. You're going to want to take the Sunderer behind the Platoon Waypoint and the Sunderer around Charlie. Ignore the other two. They're going to be there, but you can hit them later. Because most likely, A Point is going to flip once you have equal pop. And once you start pushing all of the organized people back to their points... And the Delta Sunder is just going to get farmed into oblivion later. You now, if you're taking this from Tarich, you're going to want to try and put a Sunderer basically around those same locations. Sunderer around Charlie Waypoint, Sunderer around Alpha. If you can put a Sunderer around your Platoon Waypoint, that would be great. But ideally, you want to throw a router on it. It's... In my opinion, it's harder to take crossroads from Tarich Depot or the Crown than it is to take crossroads from Xenotech, basically because this Sunderer that's on the map right now, that one is easier to put up if you have Snake Ravine and Xeno. Over here on Platoon Waypoint is a nice spot for... Hesh guns, snipers, it's a very nice spot for them. 
You can also have some people sniping from the two waypoint all the way back over here. Although that's not too much of an impact. This building, right in front of Charlie Waypoint, you don't ever want people in here unless they're casting vision or they're laying down traps. You want them all concentrated on Charlie Squad because you're going to have people dropping on top of you or foot zerging it towards you. Um, does anyone have any questions on Crossroads? I don't think yeah. so. So say you took crossroads most of the time. If you take crossroads and it was equal pop, that population is not going to go to the ground. It's going to be tempting, but they're going to want to drop on Tarich. This one has been known to be a farm. Most of the time, Tarich Tech Plan is a farm. But these Tarch lattices, depot, tower, and tech, most of the time, if you have the Western Warp Gate and you have pushed into Tarich, you are trying to start the alert. You're not trying to win so much, you're just trying to start the alert. So these lattices down here. If you've taken crossroads, all that population most likely is going to drop with you, so you're going to have some armor. If you are attempting to attack Tarich from the south, from Tarich Tech Plant, you're already going to have mass fighting between Tech and Depot. So let's just address taking it from the north. There's a Sunderer right now on Tarich Depot right over here. It's a bad spot to put it because the enemy is going to find it if it's on that side of the wall. If it's on the other side of the wall and cloaked, so... The spawn right there, Bravo Waypoint, I think you can even place it around here. No, I think that's outside of, that's inside the base. You are going to want to concentrate almost your entire platoon on the point building. There's two levels of this, many ways in. You're going to want them all in here, put a router in here. You can have some people skirmishing on Charlie Waypoint only if their goal is to take out this Charlie Waypoint vehicle spot. In my opinion, this base works somewhat similar to Briggs Laboratories in the fact that if the enemy can start pushing vehicles out of Tarich Depot, they're going to start to shove momentum off. So you're just going to want everyone inside the platoon waypoint to collapse them inside of it. If you have if you have the entire platoon on platoon way and you're just getting to the base, send some people to hack, not destroy, hack the vehicle term, and then maybe bot, maybe mine it and keep a few infiltrators around so that vehicle term isn't being utilized. There's these buildings all the way over here on Bravo Waypoint and Alpha Waypoint. If you have squad members to spare, you can tell them to skirmish on these buildings, but they're basically going to delay. They're not trying to hold the buildings. You're going to want the bulk of everyone on your platoon way. You might see some... Lost my train of thought, sorry. There is a vehicle shield all the way over here around Alpha Squad Waypoint. If you have people trying to enter this base, they're going to want to try to destroy the shield. That all being said, I would just suggest to fly over it, let the puppies deal with this shield. We almost never go after shields unless we absolutely need to. If you have a GSD sucker, you can put it straight through the bridge, and then move around to the south, around platoon waypoint, start setting up descenders here. It seems like most of the time the modus operandi is drop people from air, let the puppies worry about sunderers. This is if there isn't a good sunderer location. If there are good sunderers locations, then order your squad to bring two 
Sunderers per squad. That way, if you completely circumnavigate the squad spawns and complains that I can't spawn there, I'll pull a Sunderer there yourself. Take one for the team. But once you take charge, Depot, you now have the ugly fight of the tech plant and the tower. Most likely, though, you will be aided from the south, assuming that you haven't lost Regent Rock, because if you've taken Crossroads but you don't have Regent, yeah, you kind of have a bigger problem on your hands. So we're going to quickly switch over to the Regent Rock Lattice. Before I do that, is there any questions on Targ's Depot? Any experience? I mean, I haven't really fought much of Targ's Depot. I tend to not really avoid it, but I'd rather attach, uh, attack Targ's Cycling to the Depot. Yeah. For the Depot, I have had it on occasion many, many times where the enemy has counter -zerged. We took Recycling, we took Tower, and at this point, if you punch into Tower Recycling, expect to lose those bases within the next 15, 30 minutes, because with everyone... Hello, Communist. What's up, guys? We are on Indar right now on live. We're, we're basically talking to bases as long as Indar is up. I and thought you were on PTS. I, um... Indar is not open on the PTS. It used to be that all every continent was open, you could go through it, but that's not the case anymore. I guess. So, I was going to run on the PTS. I am going to check after this continent closes if it's open on the PTS, because that would be nice, and we could continue going, but that might not be the case. So, okay. we're on... Are you on live server right now? Yes. Okay, and I'm in, what's your... I'm not online at the moment. Hold on, I just logged off. Oh. <laughs> I thought you were on PTS. I said, I want to log off live, go on PTS. Oh, wait, he's not. <sighs> I turn it back on. <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. Hi, Unknown. Oh. We're basically just going over bases right now. I've been going over from left to right, so we've done Quartz, Com... <laughs> Broadcast Hub, Crossroads, Tarich, Depot. At this point, I'm just going to keep going on any other bases, but if anyone has any specific requests on bases that they want to go to or lattices they want to address, this is actually a great time to do that. I will gladly switch off, because we only have 41 minutes left on Indoor anyway. I do it hot today. Okay. What's the schedule? All right, I'm online. I'm in Sanctuary. All right. Uh, I invite you to the squad. Once you get in here, I'm going to put you in Delta, so I have access to a Delta squad waypoint. There we go. If, uh, see if you can set that squad to private. It's private. That's good. So, are you guys? Let's go to Regent Rock. So normally, and I've had two differing opinions presented to me on Regent Rock. If you are pressing into Regent Rock, you are most likely not going to press much further. If you hold the Eastern Warp Gate and you've pressed all the way into Regent Rock. You are going to hold this farm as long as it is acceptable and as long as you don't need to redeploy pop up to the north. If they have pressed into Regent Rock, it is going to take you at least half an hour, maybe 15 minutes to press back over to Crossroads or to Scarred Mesa. But ideally, if you have lost Regent Rock from the west, you have also lost Crossroads, and you have also lost Scar. I personally consider Regent Rock as the extreme as what you want to push into, because at this point, you're going to have a massive fight here. And if 
the Western Warpgate manages to reflip Regent back into their possession. This Zerg is now coming down to Scarred or up to Crossroads. There's a idea of momentum that I see abused, neglected, and mistook. People make mistakes on momentum all the time about pressing too far into a warp gate or pressing too far into enemy territory with the intent to hold or keep it. What ends up happening is a counter zerg will form and that counter zerg, if not stopped, will press all the way back into the territory you created and then have momentum to press into territory you don't want them to take. So I have heard Many people say, you don't actually want Regent, you just need Watchtower and Skydock, and you just want to have, let Xenotech, Burgess, Regent, and Snake Ravine just fight it out. Don't worry about taking it or not. If you have Crossroads and Scarred, that's fine. If you take Regent, there is almost always going to be a Counter Zerg forming from Regent. That will push all the way back up or all the way down. And unless you actively have a platoon on Xenotech or Burgess, that Zerg is going to roll over back to Crossroads or Scar. So let's say that you have lost Regent and you are trying to retake it. There are many, many Sunder locations on Regent Rock. Almost everyone in here, I believe, has fought at it. So I think you already know them. You've got one here on Alpha. You've got one on Delta. You've got one all the way over here on Charlie. If you can manage to get a Sunder over here, you, all of you want to have one from Bravo. The, the, the long push from Charlie. Bravo. Yep. <laughs> and this will be if forward. you're just pushing into here and you can't get to Bravo, just throw it at Charlie. It's easier. But say that you are trying to retake Regent and they have pushed into Paris, assuming you just pushed them out of Paris. Uh -huh. I am always a fan of airdrops, but on this particular base, I am also a fan of pushing armor from Vanu Archives or Paris Field Tower. So any armor that's going to be at Regent Rock is going to be in between Regent Rock and Paris Eastern. You're not going to have too much armor north of the uh, mountain of Regent. So if you can manage to push armor north from Vanu Arca or north around to Paris Eastern, you now have the ability to flank any armor that's already at Regent. Say you've just reflipped Paris. You've obviously got the armor Zerg from Regent Rock and Paris Eastern, and they're duking it out over this field on Platoon Waypoint. Huck armor, if you're not planning on dropping on the point, from Paris Field and Vano Archives, and use this open area, just completely flank it. Flank it and fire down on this armor right here. So this is a really nice spot. I've just drawn dotted lines. This is a real nice spot to set up a fire right onto the B point on your Alpha Squad. Mm -hmm. And you can just shell armor here which will allow you to set up a foothold on Alpha. You can flank armor all the way around the north, allow you to set up on Charlie. And once you've cleared Alpha, you can then move Sunderers into Delta or allows people to move Sunderers into Delta. And now you have two points that you can contest and a third point that you can help the puppies push into. Oh yeah, let, let the puppies push and then you go join them. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it really will depend on your composition at the time. I will default on some continents except some bases on Indar to asking each squad to pull two Sunderers. But if there's no way that those two Sunderers are going to get to such a position like Regent Rock, because it is heavy anti-vehicle, anti anti-everything, then you're going to want to destroy the vehicle already there instead of trying to push Sunderers into a location. Get your squad inside the points at Regent Rock. Delta Point is often the one most focused. You can put more people on Delta. 
but like normal in every bay, one squad on each point, put a squad on whichever point's getting focused the hardest. There's this little area north of Delta on the same type. Don't even worry about that place. No one ever fights there. I've put There's... a center there before. It's usually have, you ever, you, have you been using it to just attack Regent Rock Tower itself? I put it there as extra in case the rest of the Sunders get destroyed. Yeah. It might... At least for me, if there's a Sunderer there, this is the same situation as a Sunderer on Crossroads Watchtower on the two waypoint. It's there. It's You're not seriously going to retake the base from a Sunderer that's just there. Once they've, all, once they've started Sunday popping, that one is low priority because they're not really going to do much there unless they're max crashing. And I rarely see people max crashing across open ground, so... Now, say you have retaken Regent. This is all well and good. You now get to choose whether you're going to push through Burgess or retake Zeno. There's someone here? What? Sorry. No, there's no one there. There's no enemies in Hex. Oh, someone's just blowing up the vehicle terminals. I, I don't know. They, they might have been hacked then. So, Xenotech, do we want to go over Xenotech or Scarred? Xeno first and then Scarred. So, Xenotech. Hold on, I just screwed up. You have to reset on them on the waypoints. Yeah, I just reset. <laughs> Once again, I'll address this as if you're attacking Xenotech. Yeah, if you are attacking Xenotech and you have a router, always put a router up between waypoint. You want the bulk of your squads in here. You also want, if you can spare it, a squad on Bravo. If you can spawn camp them from Bravo, spawn camp them for as much as you can, but you want the bulk of your force back on the point. What I like to do is if I'm taking Xenotech and the enemy isn't there yet, I tell a squad or two to move forward and skirmish until I notice that the pop is equalized, and then I call the squads back. I just tell them, rush in, die, get back here. And at this point, it really just boils down to micro tactics. Shout out the maxes when you see them. Mine every open entrance and good composition. Good vision will also help in this space. Four spawns. Alpha squad waypoints are always a good spot for a spawn. You can put a small spawn on Charlie squad waypoint. You can, I think you can put one on Delta. That one, I actually don't think you can put one there. I think you can put one slightly behind there. I've seen people put it across the road. It's a really long hike. If you put it across the road, and they have to hike all the way over there. Yeah. I've seen Cell Sunders parked over there. Yeah, I've seen them there too. It's just a hike, and it's much easier if you just throw a router down. Routers will solve some of your center problems. Not all of them, but some of them. And once you're on the space, like likewise with Briggs, and likewise with Torich, um, Torich Depot, have someone sack the vehicle's spawn pole. If you even have an intrepid person, have them sack the vehicle spawn pole from crossroads as well, so you don't have armor rolling up from your rear. Uh, say you're defending Xenotech, and the enemy is entrenched in these positions. They're on Bravo, they're everywhere, the air is there. I would first advocate, if you can manage it, just go straight over them and gal drop. You can try to gal drop in my location. The best area would be north of the point, right between the enemy Sunder and them, because their spawn is also not going to be in the front. Their router is going to be in the back if they have one. So dropping them either on top or on top and north of the point, and then having everyone rush in from the north. Hello, White Ranger. Are you on game right now? Uh, no. Okay, if you can get on live, I can pull you into the squad. 
Understood. And moving in that way, taking care of the router. If you have a max crash available to you, this is also a nice way to do it. Instead of max crashing straight through the front door, like I see a lot of people try to do, mm-hmm. they'll just max crash straight through the front door, push through the bottom floor of the powerhouse, push through the top floor of the powerhouse, and push all the way over here. This... Hold on, I actually need to spawn there and check something. So if you can see it, there's two ways to max crash. I would recommend the top one if you have the time. Because you're going to, that will circumvent a lot of the puppies. Hold on, I need to check something real quick. What, so come up here, gum through dubs, and then take fat skinny stairs down to A? You can, you can do that. You can even just bypass dubs entirely. And assuming you don't have any armor shelling you from the right, you have a clear shot to the bottom floor of A. So you have completely bypassed this whole building, and you now can go straight into A point, having them rush down these stairs. And you can hit A point without even having to clear out the top floor. Because once you touch A point... That momentum breakthrough, especially if you get your whole platoon to do it, will allow other people to push down with you, and you have completely bypassed the building on Brahma Way. People put people put uh, routers right here, where I'm standing at. Yeah, they right put it right here. Yeah, you can put a router down here. Yeah, it's a good place to put a router, and you can block it off with the uh, baby gate, like right there. So, mm-hmm. as long- routers solve a multitude of spawn problems. Well, it's fun when population goes from one to twelve to forty-eight, ninety-six, quick secondly, because everyone well, yeah. redeploys at the same time. <laughs> you do have to make sure that everyone redeploys onto it, though. Yeah, some people deploy. Oh, there's a thunder. No, get on the router. I want, I want my spawn points. <laughs> yeah. Does anyone have any questions about Zeno? No. Uh, lightning unknown? Uh, no. Okay. So, let's redeploy and go all the way to Burgess, because we've already covered Crossroad. Are we going to cover Scarred? No. Uh, we'll cover Scarred after Burgess. Uh, so yes. we're just on the map screen right now. Um, White Ranger, we've been running it for most of the time. So, Burgess Overlook largely depends on whether or not the enemy has entrenched. Most of the time, when someone entrenches construction on Burgess, they are entrenching it to wall off Scar. They are not entrenching it to wall off Regent Rock. If they've entrenched it to wall off Regent Rock, the best way to do it really is... Uh, drop on it from above, drop on it from above, or concentrate armor in one direction. Not one direction, both directions. Most of the time, in my experience, no one entrenches from Burgess to attempt to defend from Xeno and Re. And once you've taken Xeno, once you've taken Regent, assuming you haven't lost Regent, there, that Zerg is going to help you take Burgess. You're going to want to take this as fast as possible and try to airdrop people on Scarred Mesa because you're going to expect everyone who's dead in your platoon or you're going to want the puppy to push armor through Burgess and set up the spawns at Scarred. So everyone knows where these spawns at Scarred are supposed to be, so that one shouldn't be too much of an issue. For Burgess Overlook, assuming that I have just taken Burgess and I am pushing on Scarred, I'm going to want to try and drop as many people on Scarred as possible, at the same time asking spawns to be driven from Regent to Scarred. I'm going to want a lot of spawns driven because I expect the bridge on Burgess and the bridge and the road to Scarred being mined a lot. Now say that you have taken Burgess and you are trying to defend it from Regent and Xeno. The best way to do it, in my opinion, if you have good construction guys, don't try and put a base 
um, to burn just a book, but the base behind it on the bridge. I have seen many a construction on Platoon Waypoint at Scarred Mesa stonewall anyone trying to get Burgess. Almost every time this will stop armor, unless they are surging down in a zerg, in which case this construction base at Platoon Waypoint is meant solely to slow them down, not to completely stop them. Any, any person worth their salt is going to try and airdrop behind that base on an alpha. For Burgess, you can try and put a ratter inside this little uh, one-floor building at Platoon Waypoint, but most of the time you're just going to have to over here. You want to try to put a ratter in the, in the shack right there? Yeah, it's, it's not recommended because you do not want to spend time at Burgess. You want to move through it. People put uh, rat spires in those containers if they're open. Yeah. Um, the other thing that I have seen only once, and this was kind of an interesting, was someone put an infantry construction pillbox that was walled off on all fronts. So what happens, they put a silo here on platoon waypoints. They then oh. immediately put the sunder as not the, the sunder garage as close as they could to it, and then they put an infantry pillbox, not the tower, on Charlie, mm -hmm. and they actually walled off the entrance to the pillbox using the sunder garage and the silo. So you could not physically get into the sunder garage, and you could not physically get into the pillbox from the rear. And they sacked a whole squad in there of anti-armor, anti-air, and they just shot everything from, as infantry. That was an interesting delaying tech. It stayed up far longer than it should have. So if you want to try that cheeky thing, you're absolutely welcome to do it. From ground, move as fast through Burgess as you can, or just bypass it from air. Now, let's move to Scarred. For Scarred Mesa... The best ways I have seen to attack Scarred is much like Xenotech from the air. Sack a router on platoon waypoint, not on the roof, underneath it. Put all your entire platoon on Bravo waypoint, put them over here. If you want to do micromanagement, the best way is to put two platoons, two squads up top, two squads on bottom, or a squad up top, two squads on top, one squad on bottom and have another squad skirmish around Charlie and Delta. I see a lot of times people are saying, get on the point, get on the point, stay on the point. Personally, in my opinion, if the enemy is not there, you don't have to be on the point. I just want most of you on the point. Everybody else, move forward, skirmish, and kill as many people as you want and as many as you can. Until the pop equalizes, even if the pop equalizes, I don't see a max crash. I am wanting people to kill as many people as they can in front of me, so they are not trying to get into my building. Um, a Citadel shield somewhere around... Actually, I think somewhere south of Platoon Waypoint is very nice, especially if you can cover grinders into the main building. A lot of armor, a lot of air cover is also helpful. Air cover can duck behind the main point room building and duck underneath the valley south of Scarred Mesa on the two and avoid anything that's not a striker. Yeah, strikers this... seek them out. <laughs> ah. Yeah. But I have seen many a time where you just have uh, A to G ground pounders just shelling the living daylights out of the spawn. It's very exposed. It's not happy. Most yeah. of the time, if you are trying to retake Scar, you are obviously going to know where the Sunder spawns are. Your main concern will be the router spawn, because you're going to have Sunder spawns at Platoon. You're going to have Sunder spawns at Alpha Bravo. I mean, Alpha Point. You might have some cheeky person try and put a Sunderer around Charlie, actually on the other side of Charlie, right there. Stealth, that's also possible. Your main goal, though, when you are defending Scar is to get 
back onto the point. A max crash through Delta Waypoint is always a good idea. You can even try to max crash the opposite direction. Say use Alpha Waypoint and max crash that way. I have found that's the longer of the two routes, and you're getting shelled from grinders. If you push through Delta, you can push through the bottom of the building and leave the... Uh, I think the control point's on the bottom of the building, too. It's not on the top. Control's at the bottom. Yeah, control's on the bottom, so you're going to want to go through Delta anyway, because going through the top will just get you shot at. Once you have the building, I would heavily suggest you pick a direction to shell spawns from. If the puppies are going right, you go north. If the puppies are going north, you go right. And once you are done with those... I've sometimes seen enemies put construction up a platoon waypoint. I've sometimes seen enemies put construction up here, on the other side of the bridge. So in this case, you'll just have to use your best discretion on destroying or bypassing that sort of construction. I said construction, I said discretion, sorry. Use your best guess and estimate how to run those construction. Now say you have Scarred and you're trying to take Burgess, but there is construction here. That is the most common type. If it is at all possible, or if it is all feasible, have the puppies roll across this bridge. Have your platoon or squad flank Burgess. Whether that means flanking from Crossroads or Xenotech, or whether that means sending them into Paris Eastern, having them mass pull armor through Regent and shelling Burgess from the behind, or dropping a squad with Corium bombs right on Bravo Waypoint and just shelling the daylights out of the base from above. What the shit? Don't try and push armor across this unless you absolutely outnumber them, in which case you could slowly move your armor across the bridge next to your Sunderers. Um, that's not good. What's not good? Uh, a squad of TR just dropped on Scarb. Oh well. We're not really shooting anything, we're just going over the lattices and bases. If we were interested in shooting anything, uh, this would be a completely different platoon. Um... Does anyone have any questions about the relationship of Burgess and Scarred? Not exactly, but with Scarred being so bad, to that Citadel shield, if you place it directly on Bravo Waypoint, that will cover all the entrances to the southwest. Okay. I know there's also a place around Alpha Waypoint that you can place the Citadel Shield, and it will cover up to these, this little gully area right in front of the bridge and right on grinder. So that can allow you to shell the doorway at Delta Squad Waypoint with the safety of a shield. Yeah, I believe it's right on New Bravo Waypoint. You place it there. Yep. Okay, hold on one. Hold on one second, I'm trying to do something. Uh, which base do y'all want to cover next? How do, take, how do you take tower at your cycle and not defend it? Um, turret recycling is best aided by routers. If you manage to drop a router on turret recycling, you basically hold this from the inside of the base. So one second, I have to do something. Yeah. So turret recycling, let's move on to that one. You take this base from the inside out. Putting a router on top of, not the building, but on top of the walkways 
on Tarot Recycling is your best bet. You want the majority of your platoon inside this one building, reviving anyone and shooting from the high ground. Ideally, you're going to want to drop your more than one squad simultaneously at the same time. Uh, Oxymoron says the same thing. On Platoon Waypoint, push them through the north. Or Alpha Waypoint, push them through the east. There is this building all the way over here on Charlie's squad, the triple, triple stack. You can try to put people on there, but more often than not, I have found snipers from this position do not have near as big of an impact as I'd like because of this one rock on Delta Waypoint and the many pieces of foliage. When you're retaking Tarich, you are rushing right, you're not rushing left. You can set up a crossfire if you want, but most of the time you're going to want your entire platoon inside the building at recycling. Having them inside, you're, you're going to have your hands full attempting to fend people off from these two entrances on Alpha and these two entrances on Bravo to try and worry about pushing out anymore too much. Um... If you can, you can send a squad into Alpha, and you can have them set up a crossfire onto the open area. You can even have people set up a crossfire from the L building, and from... You should have the arrows updated. You land on recycling, and no one's there. Have a few people go into each one of these buildings, and set up vision set up mines and traps, and set up crossfire on this one spawn room. And once the enemy starts to equalize pop, pull the people from Charlie's squad back, have the puppies start to skirmish, or pull the people from Alpha or Bravo squad back on the point. You will have to judge yourself whether or not you want half your platoon on the point at this time, or three squads on the point at this time. It will all depend on what you can visibly see the squad doing, and visibly see your enemy pulling. Personally for me, and I know this was a major point in the TR platoons, we have an emphasis on vision. You absolutely need more than two infiltrators on a base at any given time, running vision. They have to be running it so you can accurately see what's coming. If you see a solid line of red, that's a max scratch. If you see a solid scattered line of red, that may not be a max scratch. That may just be a spawn stream of people trying to rush their way onto you. If they're just everywhere, they can be slowly stonewalled. Unless you just see a giant group of five or six rushing towards one direction, then you know that squad and you know you have to direct the main part of your squad against that portion, not necessarily a ball. Uh, I'm sorry if that didn't make any sense. The main idea is if you want vision on the base at all times, everywhere on the space, and on any base really, so you can identify how much is coming your direction, if they are coming in a tight group or a scattering and from where. If you don't have vision, you are going to get surprised when someone gal drops on top of you or something else. It also relies less on callouts because you can just tell people, we have vision, look at the map. You, you know where the people are, ambush them. And that is taking Tarich recycling pretty much from the south and the north. More emphasis on the south because pulling vehicles from Scarred Mesa into Tarot Recycling is a pain and a half because none of these spawn locations on, say, Alpha Squad, Charlie Squad, I think you can even one put, you can even put one all the way over here on Delta. These are, it takes a long time for people to get onto the point from these center positions. So you want to route on top of the catwalks inside the main building at Tarich. If you have re if you're from the Eastern Warpgate and you have retaken the tech plant or retaken Aro Arroyo Torre or Tarch Tower, 
you actually want to employ the same strategy, just with the added bonus of having tank and air support with you. You're rarely going to see air support from Scarred Mesa Targe Recycling unless they have heavily entrenched their vehicles. And if there's enemy vehicles from Scarred uh, circling Targe, you have a bigger problem. So air dropping on top of Targe is almost always the go-to unless you have the advantage of attacking it from the tech plant or Aro Toro, in which case you can pull Sunderers and replace them easier from those two locations. Any questions? Tips? Strategies? None that I can think of. Okay. So we've only got like nine minutes left. I'm going to go to... Let's see. Uh, let's, something I briefly want to talk about that I've touched on are... Um, oh, something I want to touch on on Indar is starting this alert. Indar, if you don't already know, is also sometimes affectionately called Fundar or Staledar because it is ludicrously difficult to start the alert on this continent. You either have to force the enemy to make a mistake and give up a lot of ground, or you yourself have to make the mistake of pushing farther than you need to. So, from Indart Eastern Workgate, initially you are going to have... You're not going to have crossroads when you, ha when you start on this continent. So taking crossroads is a must. You are going to have Howling Pass, and you're going to have the Palisade. So taking Briggs and the Mao Lattices are a must. In terms of starting the alert, though, every time you have to start the alert on Indart is almost always a disadvantage, disadvantageous position because you are going to get ganked. If not at the very end, as a reaction to you pushing this far in. So, a good example of this. From the Eastern Warp Gate right now, if you zoom out of your map all the way, you can see that the TR pushed all the way to the NS Refinery, but they don't have Scarred Mesa. And they don't have Scarred Mesa right now. Yeah, they're taking it right now, um, but they don't have it yet. If they have it, Scarred Mesa and Crossroads from the Indoor Eastern Warp Gate are essential. These are your stronghold bases. These prevent the enemy from attacking your side via every open lattice. They only they only have two lattices to attack you, either Crossroads or Scar. Hold it, it's great. If you push into Regent Rock from the east, as I've described before, most likely you're going to have a counter Zerg of puppies and platoons formed against you, pushing from Paris Eastern or Snake Ravine into Crossroads, and they are going to counter Zerg all the way to your tech plant. So when you are starting the alert, do not try and push into Paris. Don't try and push into Vano Archives. It's difficult to push past Vano Archives anyway, because it is uh, eight and a half trying to push into this base. It is almost always easier to push into Paris amp. Just know that the moment you touch Paris Eastern, you are to expect a counter Zerg that you won't be able to easily stop. And oh, during sure. prime time, you shouldn't be expected to stop that Zerg. It's going to push all the way until they exhaust themselves. Thus, what the TR have done, pushing all the way into the NC, is pretty much the way that you want to start the alert. They have the Palisade. Do they don't have the Crown? That's weird. Um, they have the Palisade. They have Howling Pass. Everything north of that, Briggs, Southwest, Watchtower of Refinery, is fair game to start the alert. If you have the normal work gate, you're going to have... I don't remember if you have Indar X or not. You have Indar X, you don't have Quartz Ridge. And, ooh, that's, that's disadvantageous. So the TR are going to have to take Galaxy Solar if they want it then. 
because they're not retaking Scarred. Yeah, anyway, it's really hard to start the alert from the Indar Northern Warp Gate because by the time you take enough territory to start the alert, you are most likely going to have to push past courts on the two waypoints, and you're going to have to take Howling or push past Howling. And by that time, the map visually looks like the Northern Warp Gate is dominating, so everyone is going to rush north because they're going to get deadlocked at Scarred, deadlocked at Crossroads or Regent. And, well, the crown. and without TI Alloys, you bet your butts the VS are going to push north. The TR are going to push north if you took their Howling Pass. There are some TR outfits that call Howling Pass their home and will retake that at all costs. So if you take that, you're going to have a problem. Or if you cut that off from the behind, you're going to have a problem. And it's going to be really difficult to start the alert and then win it from the northern warp gate. The western warp gate, I before TI Alloys, I would also say this one was very difficult to start and win from or to get pushed into and win from. But with the elimination of TI Alloys, meaning you only have an open lattice connection between Indarcom and Quartz, I would postulate, and I actually need to look at past alert history, but I would say that pushing past Indar X into the Saruva lattices, Helios Solar, the Hawkeye Alkali, these, this is a much more, I want to say safer option. This is now almost the required option if you're trying to push and start the alert. If you push all the way into Aro Torre from Scar to Mesa, you absolutely are going to have a counter Zerg form from Aro Torre. They're going to push back into recycling. And the bad part is they're going to have Targe Tower open, and they're going to push into Depot and Crossroads. Mainly, long story short, on Indar, you want to try and force the enemy into starting the alert, either by them digging into you or them digging into the other guy. This is not the easiest thing to do, but sometimes there is nothing you can do because of the nature of the beast that is uh, Fundar. And we could probably go into a quick discussion after that, after Indar closes. I've got a document here I can pull up in a second. We've got like two minutes. Does anyone want to go over a base really quick on Indar? Sure. What base uh, do you have in mind? Howling. Ah, Howling Ass. Okay, okay Howling Pass. Okay. So, if you hold this base, you're going to have a... The only problem you're going to have is if you have combined arms shelling your main spawn point. Let's work at it from attacking Howling Pass, because that's most of the time that's what happened. No, Attacking the Howling Pass means that you have you either hold or have lost. Oh no, you hold Mount Southeast. When you are attacking Howling Pass, you're going to want the full backing of a 2v1. You are not going to try and attack Howling Pass with equal pop and expect to win on that first go ahead. You are going to want to have the backing of at least another platoon or another half platoon or the backing of puppies. There are many, many places on Howling Pass that you can put Sunderers. Um, you can put them on so many different locations around this base. It is frankly hilarious. There's a few places. I'm going to burn Orange Rally Point. Um, you can get a Sunderer by either Anvilling or Nimble Management directly onto Purple Rally Point over here on Howling Pass. You can get it right next to the building. And as long as you put a deployment shield and that sender is an anti-C4 sender, that is going to be exceedingly difficult to kill. Is that the blockade armor or a deployment shield? Um, both work. I would champion deployment shield because it will require more than one light assault blockade armor also works but deployment shield will prevent 
a double C4 attack plus rock up rifle from duking that Sunderer right out. So, um, if you move the Terran Republic, like if you move Howling Pass to the left of the Terran Republic screen, you can go over it real quick. Mm -hmm. If you're attacking it, you want to drop uh, two squads or one squad on the triple stack. You want to drop another squad on Bravo. You want to drop squad on Charlie. But you are going to focus on the triple stack because it this Alpha Waypoint will be the most hotly contested base along with the Bravo Waypoint. Charlie is changes hands back and forth a lot of times. So don't try and hold Charlie too much. There's too many entrances into that that are unable to be defended from. Incidentally, this means that if you are defending Howling Pass and you have lost all the points, you are going to want to focus the main brunt of your efforts either on Charlie Waypoint or on Alpha. You can use, and I encourage you to heavily use, the air pads, specifically around Delta Squad Waypoint. No, that's not what that is. Delta Squad Waypoint from the spawn room. You're going to want to use those, that pad, jump over to Alpha, jump over to Bravo, and then jump down from Bravo onto Charlie. That's a good way to do it. One thing of note is if you are a light assault, you can abort a jump pad mid-launch if you have...